Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick walkthrough of Cubase Elements. I'm going to show you around the interface so that you can get started making music in no time. Let's do this. The first thing that you will see when you launch Cubase Elements is the Steinberg Hub. And this is a great way to get started with Cubase Elements. As you can see, there are quite a few things right here on the left side. So you might find information for updates, tips and tricks, interesting videos. And on the right side, we have our templates. So these are starting points so you can get started making music really, really quickly. So we have recording templates, scoring templates, production templates, mastering templates. And in this case, I'm going to start with an empty project because I want to show you how to create everything from scratch. Now, before we do this, I'm going to select a location in which I'm going to save my project in. You can create a brand new folder and Cubase will do this for you. And all the files are going to end up in this folder. This is a very important step because you want all the files that you're going to create to be included in this project folder. So in this case, I'm going to create a new project folder and call it new beat because that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create a beat in this video. So let's hit create. And there we go. Here we have an empty Cubase project. So let me give you a quick walkthrough of the interface. As you can see, Cubase's interface is split in zones. So we have our main section where all the channels and MIDI and audio events are going to end up in. We have the left zone where we can actually find useful information about our channels. The lower zone, which can display quite a few things. I'm going to explain all of this. The right zone is where your instruments are going to show up. And it's also the home of Media Bay that contains instruments, effects, loops and samples and presets. And we also have this section here where we have really useful controls like our transport. We have our auto quantize. We have our tempo. We have our metronome and metronome settings. If you want to activate your metronome, you can just click on this button and then your metronome is going to play. So this is pretty much the interface and you can open and close zones from these buttons right here on the top right corner. So you can customize the interface exactly how you want it. Now, let me try and create my first sound. I want to start with drums. And for this, I'm going to use an included instrument in Cubase and that's Groove Agent SE. Now there are many ways to do this and I'm going to show you several of these ways. But for this example, I'm going to go to media. And as you can see, here is where we can find loops and samples, instruments, effects, presets. We can also have our own user presets. In this case, because I want to create an instrument, I'm going to go to VST Instruments. And as you can see, I have all my instruments here, including instruments that are not included in Cubase, maybe third-party plugins that you have on your system. So I'm going to choose Groove Agent SC and I'm going to drag and drop it into my project window. And just like this, I've just created an instrument track. So now all I want to do is I want to go and load a nice preset. I'm going to choose the Laser Beams Library. And I'm going to select a preset and now I can immediately start playing these drums. So very, very simple. Now, if you want to get started with a groove straight away, you can use the patterns that we have in Groove Agent SE. So if I click on patterns here, you will see that we have these pads and all of these include a pattern in them. So let's try the intro. One, two, three. Okay, let's drop this into our project. And I'm also going to drop a couple of different patterns here. And just like this, we have a really nice drum arrangement so that we can start building our beat. So let's have a listen. Now, what if I want to change the tempo? Let's say I want to make this a little bit slower. I can go here into my tempo and type my new tempo. In this case, I want a tempo of around 100 BPM. So let's play it. I like this better. Now, let's say I want to have a nice big bass sound. What I can do is I can go to my loops and samples here on my media tab. 
And in this case, I'm going to select one of the beautiful libraries that we have included in Cubase Elements, and I'm going to select the Lo-Fi Dreams. And as you can see, we have many, many different samples here. So I can start auditioning them. But what I want to find in this case is a nice 808 sub bass. So I'm going to go for maybe this one. This is really nice. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to bring up my lower zone, I'm going to click here. And as you can see here, we have the mixer and I'm going to show you the mixer in a second. But what I want to go for is a sampler control page here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drag this sample into my sampler control. And now I've turned this sample into a playable instrument using the sampler track. And the sampler track gives me a lot of flexibility when sculpting the sound. So I can go and activate a filter here and maybe I want to add a little bit of drive to make this sub bass a little bit more aggressive. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my first recording. So I'm going to record MIDI. Now in order to do this, all you need to do is select any of the instrument tracks you have created. It could be the Groove Agent track, but in this case, I'm going to go for the sampler track. And all you need to do is click on this record enable button. And all I need to do is hit record on my transport and we're gonna be ready to go. And that's it, now it's in. If you paid attention, what happened was that when I reached the end of this region here, then my recording cycled, so it looped. This happened because I had cycle mode activated right here, and then I can set up what the cycle is going to be right here on my cycle locators. Now, the lower zone is dynamic. So as you can see, we can have the mix console where we can start mixing our track. We can have the sampling control. We can have the editor that I'm going to show you right now. So if I double click on this MIDI event that I just created, you will see that now I have all the MIDI notes that I played. So I can just change the notes, move them across like this, or I can quantize my notes so that they're all rhythmically correct. And in order to do this in Cubase, the only thing you need to do is hit the Q key on your keyboard. And we have quantize. Now I'm going to show you an alternative way that you can create instrument tracks in Cubase. The second way is by going to this plus symbol right here. And here you can select from all these different track types. So we have audio. I'm going to record some guitars later on. This is for recording audio, vocals, all these things. We have instrument tracks that I'm going to do right now, a sampler track that I just showed you, and quite a few other different track types. But in this case, I'm going to go for instrument. I'm going to go for another included instrument, which is Hylian Sonic SC, and I'm going to call this pad. And I'm going to add track. And there we go. Here we have Hylian Sonic SC. As you can see, we have quite a few presets right here. In this case, I'm going to select one of the pads that are included. Let's listen to it. And now let's record it. And there we go. And now our pad is in. Now, how about we add some nice vocal samples to spice up this beat? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to media. I'm going to go for another library that we have in Cubase Elements that's called Bloom. And this is a beautiful vocal library. And I'm going to select one of the samples. You're looking right. I know that you like what you see. Great, let's create a sampler track out of this sample. So I'm going to go to my sampling control, drop my sample here. And what I'm gonna do for this sample is I'm going to go to my filter, I'm going to activate it, and I'm going to turn it into a high pass filter. And I'm going to make this sample a little bit thinner. You're looking right. 
Now, how about if we want to add some effects to this sample? Because sounds good, but I want to sound a little bit more atmospheric. So let me go to my mix console in this case. And of course, here is where we can start mixing a track. So we can adjust volumes, we can adjust the panning. So but this is also where we can start adding effects. So I can go here and click on this button and now I can start adding effects to each one of my channels. In this case, I'm going to go to my first slot, type reverb so that I can see all my reverbs. And now I'm going to select a reverb that's included in Cubase Elements and that's Roomworks. So let's see how it sounds with the reverb applied. <laughs> This sounds good to me. Now let's record these vocal samples. up to this point is how to create an instrument, how to create a sampler track, how to record MIDI. Now let me show you how easy it is to record audio, like a guitar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here on my plus symbol, add track, and in this case I'm going to create an audio track. Now I know that my guitar is connected to input number one, so I'm going to leave it there and I'm going to call this guitar. And maybe I want to add some amp simulation effects, maybe a delay, some tremolo to my guitar. Let me show you another way that you can add effects in Cubase. What you can do is you can click on this E button here, and now we can add the VST amp rack. And this is a great plugin for guitars. It has many amp simulations. And as you can see, what I've loaded here is a nice amp. I have the cabinet, and I also have some effects like tremolo, phaser, and tape delay. Now, in order to listen to my guitar with all the effects, and of course, this I can change after I've recorded if I want to, I just need to activate the monitor button right here. And you will see that straight away. <laughs> I have my guitar sound with all the effects, and if I want, I can change this after the fact. So let's go ahead and record this guitar in audio now. So now if I want to listen back to what I played, I just deactivate the monitor button and let's listen. Now, let's say I want to pan my instruments on the left and right channel. All I need to do is go here. I'm going to go to my mix console and now I can start adjusting the volumes of each channel and their position in the panorama, so left and right. Now in case you're not very comfortable in playing chords on the keyboard, there's another very cool thing in Cubase that you can use to create easy chord progressions. So in the lower zone, we also have a tab called Chord Pads, and here is where you can start triggering chords very, very easily. For example, if I select the same pad, I can play the chords on my chord pads. And if I want, I can completely customize the chords. So for example, in this case, I can make this an A minor seventh. And you can, of course, record all these pads and trigger them from your keyboard. So it's super, super simple, even if you're not a great keyboard player. Now, after you've produced your track, you've played all the instruments and you've mixed it, you probably want to share this with the world. And it couldn't be any easier. If you want to create an MP3 or a WAV file, all you need to do is go to File and then Export 
Audio Mixdown. And here is where you can name your file, select the location where you want to save your file. You can select whether you want it to be an MP3 or a WAV file. You can select the quality. And then all you need to do is hit export audio and Cubase will create the file for you. So there you go. I hope you find this video helpful and you're ready to go and create some amazing music in Cubase elements. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.